Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage of DockerCon 2015 here from San Francisco, California. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. One of the big things we're talking about at the show is really the ecosystem uh, that's building around Docker, the project, the company, and happy to have on with me uh, two, two members of that ecosystem. So first we've got Mark Davis, who's the CEO of Cluster HQ, uh, the company that's what, the main driver behind Flocker. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Stu. And uh, we've also got Ken Durazo, who's a VP in EMC's uh, corporate office at the CTO. Ken, yeah. thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot, Steve. All right, so both of you, first time on theCUBE, right? Yeah, yeah All right. So, so Mark, I, I'm surprised you haven't been on in some of the various roles yeah. in yeah. the past, but thanks, you know, if, if, for those that don't know, you know, we go out to all the big shows, help extract the signal from the noise, um, yeah. and thanks for joining us. First, you know, Mark, you know, you've been in you know the, these ecosystems and watched them grow before. Give us a quick snapshot of kind of your background. What you know brought you to Cluster HQ and into the Docker show? Well, so I've been doing you know tech, technology things for way too many, many years. But I'll talk about my last company, which was a company called Versto Software, uh, which was a virtual storage uh, software play that was dealing with how do you optimize the way storage systems integrate with virtual machines. Um, and had a long run as an independent company and the company was acquired by, by VMware a couple of years ago and that technology is now part of the VMware vSAN project. So when I heard about uh, containers becoming big a couple of years ago and um, we saw started to see what people were trying to do with them, we realized there's going to be lots of people trying to put containers into production environments. And when you think of production environments, you think of protecting your data in a very careful way. And what we didn't see when we surveyed the landscape was anybody really working on how do you make containers that have data in them reliable, fast, performant, easy to manage, et cetera. So that's what got us started at, at Cluster yeah. HQ, and that's what led to Flocker. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, you know, remember, I mean, you know, I, I think we all have, you know, the battle wounds from, you know, server virtualization was great, but yeah. boy, we spent a decade kind of fixing the things that broke yeah. in both the network side and uh, the, the storage side. Ken, yep. let, let's pull you in. Tell us a little bit about, you know, your role inside EMC, uh, about your background. Yeah, so I work in the office of the CTO and um, I lead a team of uh, basically advanced research and development. And so we've been really at the, the tip of the spear in terms of looking at Docker's open source and other types of, uh, things in, the, in this community and, and uh, contributing back in many cases as well. And uh, we identified a, an area specifically within Docker that we thought aligned fairly well with uh, Flocker in our in our R&D perspective and uh, that data persistence is kind of where we think that uh, is going to be a big key role for EMC to, uh, to play. Yeah, I, I guess when I think about the early applications most people are talking about have been stateless apps. Absolutely. Um, so get, maybe Mark, t talk to us, what was the announcement you guys made today? Bring us up to speed and why, why partner with EMC? Well, a couple of things. So, so dealing, as you said, dealing with state, stateless apps has been what Docker has been all about, and you can do great things with containers as long as they don't have any state that needs to be retained, and that's all fine and dandy. But to capture the entire application, we're all building software in a microservices architecture these days, and what we hear is more and more people want to run the entire application, not just the stateless application tier, um, inside of their containers. So, what Flocker does is ena enable people to put state in their containers, and then have the ability to move a container from server A to server B, and maybe yeah. move it from one cloud to another cloud, and have the data go with it. So this is the uh, the, the project my company is on. We, our, our mission is to make it where all the storage systems can connect with into Docker, and, and by the way we connect in with Docker, then all those storage systems can be um, under the umbrella of an orchestration system like Docker Swarm or Mesos or Kubernetes. And so um, when when Ken and his team, um, when we met with these guys, I guess it was a couple months ago, Ken, yeah, yeah. Um, um, we just saw a lot of opportunities to do some clever things together. So the announcement is um, an integration uh, with EMC storage systems, particularly Scale.io and Extreme.io, which are you know, spe spectacular systems, hardware and software, um, with the Flocker uh, system, which is now part of the Docker plugins ecosystem that was just announced a couple of hours ago that we haven't been able to talk about until this morning, but you know, having this 
plug-in mechanism where everything can become seamless is, is, is essential here, and that's why we partner with EMC to, to bring in their storage system. Okay, and, and just to clarify, when you say we can move uh, you know, the, the storage there, um, is that like a vMotion, or is it, do, do I have to have a reboot, uh, re restart? Well, it means, there? so today, yeah. it's not full vMotion. So, so when we think of a VMware vMotion, yeah. we think of having a virtual machine that is running and picking that virtual machine up and moving it from server A to server B while it's running and with no interruption of service and any clients of that, of that virtual machine don't even know that it moves. So we're not there yet with containers. We will get there, but we're not there today. What we are, where we're at today is simply being able to take a container, um, um, move it from server A to server B, and when, when, it, when it moves, have its data go with it. So there is, there is some restart time involved, yeah. and that's certainly one of the things that we'll work on going forward is getting rid of that. Yeah, and this is kind of why we chose the two uh, initial platforms for this, both the scale I.O. and the extreme I.O., in that both of them are very um, nice scale out platforms. And you know, from an all flash array, you know, looking at the, the very highly performant type of uh, database applications that, that we see moving forward, the extreme I.O. was kind of the right first shot to put there. And then the server side SAN kind of uh, SDS uh, implementation for scale I.O. kind of, those are the first two that, that made sense from an initial offering. Yeah, server stands actually are our, our, our term that we use at Wikibon. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. We, we've done a lot of research on that piece. Um, yeah. You know, newer technologies out of the EMC portfolio. So, Ken, question I have for you is: yeah. Are your customers asking for this today, or is this kind of a, a research project that we understand this is where the puck is going, and we want to stay there? What, what, what are you guys seeing? At EMC? So, I think you know, as you you kind of rightly annotated before, most of the the work in containers has been around stateless, but increasingly we see more and more customers saying, "Hey, what about these other types of apps that we have that will have some level." of data persistence and what do we do here? And so this is kind of a, you know, I, I guess you could say a, a forward looking or a preemptive uh, move in this direction. All right, so, so Mark, is, my mention, this is Flocker 1.0 now, right? It is. So tell us what that, that means. means. We, yeah. we, we think it's safe for you to use it in production um, and if it breaks, you know, we're on, to, we're, we're on top of fixing it. So um, it is, um, you know, it is a robust system. We do have customers running it live. We actually, EMC and, and Cluster HQ have a joint customer that are now putting, yeah. putting this into production. Um, so we think it's ready. We've got lots more software to go. It is a 1.0, and, and we have work to do to go to 2.0 and 3.0, but it's a good first step, and it is solid stuff that we think is, is production ready. Yeah, well, you know, software 1.0 is pretty good. I, on the hardware side, I always said, you know, make that first generation, hopefully throw it out or don't get it beyond beta and yeah. refresh it before you go. Yeah. Software's yeah. good. Um, so we've talked about going from stateless to stateful. Yeah. What about security? Because, yeah. you know, is my data secure if I'm doing this? How, how does Flocker, you know, help or, you know, what, what is the security story? Well, so the, secur the security domain, you know, within containers is the container itself. Right, so um, so we're reliant on the security infrastructure that's built into the container itself, yeah. um, and you know, Docker made some some statements today about things that they're working on in, in that realm. Yeah. Um, um, and so the tenancy, so the idea of having extreme multi-tenancy is part of what, con what containers are about. So you know, for for example, this this customer um, Swisscom that we that is a joint EMC cluster HQ customer is building a database as a service where they have want to put thousands, maybe as many as 10,000 containers yeah. on a single server and do this for customers who expect their data to be private and yeah. not have, um, yeah. you know, this is, this is database as a service. So, um, so the security model um, has, to support that, has to support that and that, you know, it's part of what containers are about is to have a box around, um, you know, the data itself. Yeah, and I think th this is a, you know, in a, the, the Flocker team has actually put out some software that's in, in a really, really good direction down this path. And additionally, you know, uh, my team continues to look at um, new areas for data persistence, isolation, and security. And I think EMC is going to be uh, doing a lot more in that realm as well, too. Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, so uh, I'm a little familiar with Swisscom uh, from what they were doing in, in OpenStack. Yep. Uh, you know, so they're, they're a company that you know used to break in a little bit of glass and, and trying some interesting things. Anything else? What can you tell us about this customer? Well, so so, so yes, yeah, so this is so what what um, Swisscom are trying to do is deliver um, services to their to their customers, um, you know, throughout Europe. Um, and they are very um, uh, uh, heavy and aggressive users of, of OpenStack. And in fact, this is this particular application is running on top of Cloud Foundry on, on OpenStack. Um, and they, you know, it, to, to deliver this service, containers are so obviously the right way to do it. Firing up a container that is very efficient and can be done in way less than a second versus having to start a virtual machine per customer, it's just an obvious thing to do. Um, and for the stateless parts of their application, it was a fairly easy thing to do. But um, you know, th these guys do run, know how to run things at scale in production, and 
Um, any of us who have done this in the real world know that sooner or later something is going to go wrong. Um, hardware is going to fail, I'm going to need to upgrade something, um, I'm going to need to you know, move things around for various reasons. So for them to deliver database as a service that is A, scalable, which containers provides, but B, something that has some operational ability, so when that eventuality comes that I'm going to have to move this container, um, yeah. they needed a way, a way to solve that problem. Containers, you know, Docker does not do that natively, it has no notion of containers moving around or having a name that lives, be, uh, a namespace that lives beyond the life of a particular container. So that's where Flocker came in, that's why they, they came and started working with us. Um, and you know, it's, it, again, it's, it's a first but really important step to making sure we can do all the things in production that we want to do with, with containers, um, just like we do with virtual machines. Yeah. All right. so, so Ken, you know, I, th I think back to the early days of uh, you know, server virtualization. Yeah. Uh, you know, two big problems we had is number one, there was the IO blender effect, yeah. so performance, you know, was really tough because yeah. you know I didn't have predictable ability as to where the workloads. Are. And secondly, you know, things like snapshots and replications and all those pieces, you know, it broke because I didn't have it. You know, I had it at the one level, not at the VM level. So, yeah. you know, are we going to have these same problems with containers? What's EMC's position? You know, what? Where are we today? Where do we need to go? Yeah, I, I think that we're going to have similar types of, of issues. That you know, but. The good news is, is that I think that the community is already starting to rally around kind of, you know, where we're headed with more stateful imp uh, implications with containers. And um, as we start to move more and more of those stateful apps, I think it, there'll be some natural developments in that area to, to work with that. Including, I mean, even right now, we're already having discussions with uh, Cluster HQ on stuff that, how do we make it better and how do we how do we enhance both the data persistence story as well as, you know, tackle some of these really tough challenges. Yeah, it's this, this is somewhat like the vir server virtualization revolution, but it's different. Containers are not just merely a different way to virtualize. Um, what's exciting about this is how fast it's happening, right? I mean, you oh, mentioned yeah. you know, it basically took us about a decade to get virtual machines to do all the things we want to, and we're still not done, right? There's still things, um, you know, that you know, VMware is still just ro still rolling out things. So this is hard software, and it takes a long time. What's really exciting about what's happening at containers is um, it's happening super fast. And I, I think a big part of that is because it is open source. Um, and there yeah. is no monolithic um, company controlling everything. And um, I'm super excited about what, what Docker has announced today. We, we worked on heavily with them this, ex this idea of having plugins. So now, you know, building something that allows third parties to plug in software so that it's natively manageable by yeah. the platform itself is a huge step forward. When, um, when we were at Versto Software, you know, we had all kinds of cool things we could do to solve the IO Blender, right? We could make virtual machines go yeah. much faster. But, um, because VMware at the time was a closed platform, you know, if you couldn't get inside a VM kernel, you couldn't add your software. And only VMware could be inside a VMware VM kernel, yeah. right? So, so um, it took longer in that, in that environment. And the fact that, th that, um, that all this container stuff, you know, from LXC and Linux on up, is based on open source is part of what's making this go faster. Um, it's still going to take a couple of years for us to have it do everything we want it to do, but um, boy, it's going, it, it's part of the fun of this, is of, the, of what's happening in, in containers is it's so fast. Yeah, so, so, so Mark, uh, you know, talking about open interfaces, uh, obviously Flocker is working with EMC. Yep. What other solutions does it work with? So today we work with Amazon EBS as a back end, so, so if you're using EBS as your back end store. We also work with Cinder, so if you are in an open stack environment, anything that plugs into Cinder, okay, um, is, is, is uh, manageable by Flocker. We also have our own implementation of a local file system. Um, we've done a lot of work with, with uh, ZFS, or ZFS as my friends in England like to call it. Um, which um, we use as a local file system. We have some pretty clever ways of snapshotting and replicating using that. That, that part of our software is still experimental and is not released as a 1.0, but we have multiple backends we support now, and we, and we think we're covering a lot of ground with the ones we have. But part of what we wanted to do, just as Docker wanted to make it easy for third parties to write pl plugins, we have a pretty straightforward driver interface. So you know, Ken and his team, um, you know, it didn't take months or years to, to, to build these drivers. Um, so you know, maybe a matter of days slash weeks. Yeah. Um, and so for other companies or other open source projects to build a, a Flocker driver, it's yeah. not terribly hard. And you know, I, 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 there are others already in process and 
hopefully we'll have some others to announce pretty soon. Yeah, we, we, we say one of the big differences we see between you know this wave and previous waves is it's happening so much faster. Oh, yeah. So the network effect of open source, so yep. many companies getting involved. Yep. Uh, you, actually, you guys did a, did a survey recently, Mark. Maybe William. you can give us some of the highlights as that, as what you're seeing from customer usage, adoption, surprises uh, from, from that container survey. Yeah, we, we, um, we, we were trying to figure out you know, what, what's the state of container adoption, in, in, in particularly in production operations, right? So, because um, we, we all know that you know, with a half a billion downloads of, of Docker, there's something going on, certainly amongst developers. Um, um, we wanted to understand what's happening in really, really in production, so we contracted uh, with DevOps.com to do a survey with their user base, um, and you know, came up with some interesting data. First of all, a surprisingly large amount of, of Docker in production. 40% of the people in this survey, and this is about a 300 person survey, so it's statistically significant. 40% almost are running something in production with Docker, which is pretty interesting. Um, so that, you know, that, that, and of course, you know, plans to go much, much higher in the next 12 months. The other thing that was really interesting to this conversation was what percentage of people thought that dealing with data was important. Yeah. And again, as you said earlier, Stu, you know, a year ago, nobody was talking about what we call stateful containers. Um, people were assuming everything was stateless and state was something that you didn't deal with in your Docker environment. That was independent yeah. of Docker. And now, um, in this particular survey, 95% of the people that responded said that container data management um, had you know, some importance to them as they thought about going into production. So what that means is what we're doing with EMC, and there's other people doing interesting storage things now with containers that are being announced here at this show. All this stuff is going to become more and more important, I think. All right, uh, Ken, wondering, do, do you have any kind of early start points? You know, if you're, you're talking to customers and they say, how do I get started, you know, wh wh what's your recommendation to them? Huh, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a pretty broad question, actually. Uh, do you mean with regards to just stateful containers or just in general? Yeah, so I, I mean, from, from a storage standpoint, yeah. I guess it would, would be the thing. Is there, there are certain apps that you're saying, okay, hey, these ones are good ones to start with. These ones, you know, you probably might not want, you know, your, your globally dispersed, you know, cluster yeah. of mission critical stuff yet. You know, yeah. so. Yeah. So there's a ton, actually. We're, we're working with a lot of different customers on a wide spectrum of microservice architectures, as well as, you know, uh, looking at ways to make databases like a Mongo and Cassandra, et cetera, a lot more um, extensible and more performant and deterministic, et cetera, some of those things you mentioned before. Um, you know, I, it's, I guess it's not, we normally don't sit back and guide customers into the right types of applications, but rather we take a look at what they're trying to do and then trying to match them with the right types of technologies in order to manifest what, what they want, the outcome that they're looking for for their business. Okay, uh, so we're, we're running out of time. I want to, you know, we're at the beginning of the show here. You know, what are you hoping to get out of the show? You know, what, you know, where, where, where are we, uh, you know, with this whole wave here? And, you know, why is it so exciting? Mark, we'll start with you. Well, it's, it is exciting to see the growth of this, right? So, you know, we were just talking about the, you know, how, how big this show was a year ago, the Amsterdam show that had happened six months ago, and then yeah. this show, and, and you know, a lot of people got turned, turned away, so this show could have been bigger if they just had more room to, to yeah. see people. So the, the excitement is you know, quite severe, and um, what I'm, what I'm you know, really pleased to see is the number of, of engineers who are here looking for solutions to figure out, how do I broaden what I'm doing? Uh, yeah. And Solomon Hikes, when he was doing his presentation this morning, um, in his keynote, you know, said the whole, he he one of the he asked the audience how many people here run Docker and only Docker and not a single person rose their hand raised their hand because of course it is part of a of a broader solution so what I'm excited about is the number of people that are doing interesting things around containers you you mentioned security there are some things to be done there so I'm excited for people to work on that on those kinds of problems and I can't wait to go see all the booths of all the other people that are doing interesting things here yeah and for me I echo many of those I I think the ones that have kind of come out for me is really interesting are kind of the the excitement around the community and the and the acknowledgement that there's still a lot of work to be done yeah. and there's a whole lot of avenues to, to come in and blanket and, and really help out the community and get stuff yeah. done. Yeah, I, I, you know, Mark, as a closing note, I think when, when we talked last week about, you know, the announcement you were making, you were saying, all right, if we were looking at the VMware ecosystem, you know, where are we? 
you know, or you know, it might be at the kind of virtualization, you know, the you know VMware desktop at this point. It's not ESX, it's not vSphere. You know, yeah. we're we're back, you know, where we were, you know, a dozen years or so. Yeah. So, all right, uh, you know, Mark uh, and and Ken, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great time at the rest of the show, and and thanks for sharing and uh, being being part of the ecosystem. Uh, this is Stu Miniman. I'll be right back with our next guest right after this quick break. Thanks for watching us from DockerCon 2015.